Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Stella persuades Trina to return to PCU, Nina has a suggestion for Drew, and Willow tells Sasha about the kiss. Trina and Stella meet at the cafe for breakfast. She informs her aunt that she has been selling numerous pieces at the gallery. Stella is relieved that her art appreciation has returned, but it's time for her to return to school. Stella can see she's procrastinating and believes she's hesitant to take the next step. She advises that Spencer would not want her to put her life on wait indefinitely, and that it is time for her to pursue her aspirations anew. Stella knows Spencer died, but Trina did not, and she still has a life ahead of her. Stella reminds her that she once expressed a desire to be an art professor or a museum curator, both of which require degrees. Trina acknowledges that returning to school is terrifying. Stella understands, but encourages she do it for her future self and the opportunities that school today will provide her tomorrow. Trina knows she's correct, and Stella proposes they go to PCU and register her for the fall. Trina says, let's do it, let's get unstuck. Nina meets with Sasha in the kitchen at the Quartermain house to discuss catering Drew's benefit. Sasha is flattered, but adds Tracy has been harping on her recently, so she should keep her head down. Nina reminds her that Drew is a Quartermain, and she wants the fundraiser to be a success. Sasha thinks Nina is interested in Drew, and Nina admits Drew has shocked her. Nina advises that if Tracy has a problem with her doing this, she should take it up with Drew. Sasha notes how far she and Drew have come. Nina admits they've gone, but not far enough. Willow is doing yoga outside the boathouse when it is damp. Drew emerges from his swim feeling refreshed. Willow loses balance and nearly falls over, so Drew swoops in to grab her. She swiftly pulls away, and after some small conversation, Willow says she needs to get going and can't get away from him fast enough. Back in the kitchen, Sasha inquires whether Nina and Drew have made time for each other despite their hectic schedules, but Nina responds that they have not. Sasha can see how committed she is to assisting Drew. Nina agrees that if he wins, they may resume their relationship. Willow emerges on the porch and appears to have overheard their conversation. Willow finally enters the kitchen, claiming she smells Sasha's excellent scones. Nina mentions that she misses working with her kid, and Sasha offers to make Willow some tea and steps away. Willow inquires as to what brings Nina by, and she says that she is organizing a fundraiser for Drew and has requested Sasha's catering services. She needs to talk with Drew, and Willow says he's just down at the boathouse. Nina set out to find him. Sasha returns with tea, and Willow congratulates her on her catering job. Sash says she's still unsure, and Willow observes that this is common. Sasha finally admits that she witnessed her and Drew kissing on July 4th. She gets the impression that what happened is weighing on her, and if she needs to chat, she's available. Willow considers it a kiss, and they were just caught up in the moment. A second later, she breaks down and admits that it occurred again. They sit down, and Willow reveals she has feelings for Drew, but she adores Michael and their life together. Willow tears about trying to keep her distance from Drew, but Sasha reminds out that they all live together, which must be difficult. Willow argues that she has done everything she can to avoid Drew, even returning to General Hospital. She hoped being away from Drew would stop these sensations, but it hasn't, and she is crying because she feels so out of control. Sasha consoles her and understands why she would have affections for Drew after he saved her life. However, if she loves Michael, she must continue to avoid Drew and admit that they have all made mistakes. Willow appreciates that she did not judge her. Sasha acknowledges she is far from ideal. Willow still doesn't sure what to do. Nina walks to the boathouse, where Drew is drying off. Nina informs him about the fundraiser she's preparing, but he cuts her off and says it won't work for him. He's beginning to doubt himself, his personal life is a disaster, he's down four points, and his opponent has the whole family thing going for her. Nina informs Drew that he has Scout, but he will not use her as a prop. Nina suggests, then use me. She claims she could accompany him to every function on his arm, and there's no harm in letting voters believe they're the newest power couple. You'd do that for me? He inquires. 
she acknowledges she owes him one, and he laughs, you do. Sam asks Michael in his office regarding Christina and where she was the night John Cates died, remarking that they've just become connected at the hip. Michael acknowledges he wasn't with her, but he knows she did not kill Cates. She says he sounds confident, does he know who did? He brings the subject back to why she is concerned about Christina. Sam realizes her mother is protecting Christina and has framed herself for a murder she did not commit. The only way to liberate her mother is to discover the person who killed Kate's, and they both believe Sonny either killed him or gave the order. Michael twists the subject again, stating that discovering the guilty people will take too long and that they must recover the gun and clear Christina and Alexis first. Sam says she hopes they discover enough evidence to clear her mother, but if not, will he let an innocent woman go to prison? She then storms out. At Sonny's, he's on the phone, telling someone that Alexis has no idea he's called them for assistance, and money is no object. When Molly arrives at his door, he must hang up the phone. He invites her in, and she informs him that her mother is being arraigned today. He knows and is going to court to assist her, but Molly believes it is the worst thing he can do. She claims he will contaminate her by association. Sonny says he wants to be there for Alexis and Christina, and he is willing to pay her bail. She claims he will not, that the family will find a way to pay it, and that this is about her mother rather than Christina. Sonny admits Christina has gone through a lot recently, and he has to be there for both Alexis and his daughter. Molly lashes out, claiming Christina's dedicated dedication to him is what brought her to Ava's suite and caused her baby's death. Sonny claims she never went there planning to lose a baby, and it's all Ava's fault. Molly responds that Christina should never have gone there and informs Sonny that they do not need or want him in court today. Christina believes that seeing their mother make bail is in their best interests. Sonny claims her point has been made, and he will not leave. However, because he is unable to be present for Christina, she must temporarily suppress her rage and focus on her sister. He does not believe Christina will be able to handle this. Molly refuses to make any promises and goes out. Michael arrives later and asks if he disposed of the gun, to which Sonny responds that Jason did. Michael warns him that Sam suspects him and will go to any length to clear her mother's name. He also claims Christina has time she cannot account for, and knowing Christina, she will not let her mother take the blame for this. In Somalia, Sidwell stated that he was astounded by Lucky's continued poker success. Sidwell stated that he took satisfaction in knowing that Lucky would finally lose, and he could then kill Lucky. Sidwell quickly proclaimed that Lucky's luck had run out, but a goon interrupted them before Sidwell could act on his threat. While Sidwell spoke with his goon, Lucky played the cards to ensure his victory. On the other side of the room, the goon informed Sidwell that diamond mines were running low. Sidwell unexpectedly shot the goon and directed Lucky to seek for the deceased. Lucky rummaged through the goon's pockets and found raw diamonds. Lucky handed over the jewels to Sidwell. Moments later, a goon entered the cell to retrieve Sidwell. After being shackled to the chair and left alone, Lucky smirked as he withdrew a little rough diamond from his sleeve. Jordan sat in Anna's office in Port Charles and told her about apprehending the man who meant to kill Isaiah. Jordan remained determined to discover who the John Doe patient truly was. Anna informed Jordan that as soon as she learned something, she would inform him. Jordan left, and Jason appeared at the door. Anna wondered if Jason was there to gloat about Alexis being a suspect in the John Cates murder case, but Jason had no knowledge Alexis had been hauled in for questioning. Jason couldn't understand why the police believed Alexis knew anything about the murder. Jason explained that he was there since he knew Anna had wanted to speak with him earlier. Anna told Jason that she thought they had formed an alliance and become friends. Jason agreed that they worked well together, and he assured Anna that he had never informed Sonny that Anna had assisted Valentine in his escape. Jason was astonished by Anna's chilly demeanor and begged for one minute to present his case. You're basing your evidence on a missing registered weapon, Jason stated. Anna understood what Jason was attempting to tell her. Sonny would never have used a gun that was legally his own to murder someone, is that what you're saying? Anna asked. Jason insisted that Sonny was not foolish. Anna stated that her gut was telling her that Sonny had killed John. Anna received a call and discovered that Isaiah was awake, so she left for the hospital. 
As Elizabeth attended to Isaiah, he awoke unexpectedly and shouted out the word lucky. When Elizabeth informed Isaiah that he was at the hospital in Port Charles, Isaiah introduced himself and said that Lucky, his friend, had sent him there. He asked Elizabeth if she knew Lucky, which took her by surprise. How do you know Lucky Spencer? she inquired. Before Isaiah could respond, TJ entered the room and informed Elizabeth that she was needed at the nurse's station. Elizabeth promptly called Carly and told her the news about Lucky, unaware that Carly was already at the hospital seeing Lulu. TJ evaluated Isaiah, who asked specific medical questions concerning his illness. TJ immediately recognized Isaiah as a doctor. After TJ had left, Carly arrived and introduced herself as Lucky's cousin. In the corridor, Elizabeth ran into Anna. Elizabeth sent her to Isaiah's room before Jason exited the elevator. Elizabeth informed Jason about her new patient. She was astonished when Jason revealed that he was the one who had found Isaiah. Elizabeth informed Jason that Isaiah knew Lucky, which shocked him. When Anna arrived at Isaiah's room, he described how he had landed himself in Port Charles. Isaiah explained that he was providing medical aid overseas when he met Lucky, who assisted in the procurement of supplies. Isaiah told Anna that he had been kidnapped by a man named Sidwell, a name she recognized. Isaiah claimed that Sidwell was a hypochondriac who had asked Isaiah to be his doctor. After visiting with Isaiah, Anna noticed Jason and Elizabeth outside the room and informed them that they may see Isaiah. Jason insisted on conversing with Anna alone initially. After Elizabeth departed to speak with Isaiah, Jason informed Anna that while he worked with Anna, everything remained between them. Jason also stated that while he worked with Sonny, things remained between them. Anna was dismayed by Jason's refusal to abandon Sonny. Jason stated that he would still like to work with Anna and assist her as needed because he considered her a friend. I wish I felt the same, Anna remarked. In Isaiah's hospital room, he continued his story, revealing that Lucky had attempted to rescue him but became trapped in Sidwell's stronghold. Isaiah explained that Lucky had told him to try to get to Port Charles and contact the WSB. Isaiah also told Carly exactly where Lucky was being held. Carly quickly left to see Brennan after Isaiah told how he had been hit by a car. Isaiah stated that he knew immediately that someone was observing him at the airport. He had rented a car, but when he noticed he was still being followed, he got out and started running. Before he could get too far, he was hit by a car. When Elizabeth visited Isaiah, she disclosed that she and Lucky were once married and had a son named Aiden. Elizabeth was horrified when Isaiah told her that he had never seen Lucky in such distress. Later, Carly appeared at Brennan's office and requested his assistance. I need you to find the exact location of my cousin Lucky, Carly told you. Brennan ran over the information he had provided Laura, but Carly wanted him to be more specific, immediately. Brennan agreed to try but couldn't guarantee he'd find Lucky. Jordan proceeded to Drew's office after visiting Anna's. Drew noticed Jordan was distracted by something, so she told him what had transpired in the hospital. Drew was really impressed. Drew also saw that Jordan enjoyed doing police-like job again. Molly frantically contacted Diane from Alexis' living room to inform her that the cops had brought Alexis to the station. When Michael and Christina returned, Molly informed them that Alexis was being questioned about John's death. Molly explained that Alexis had been spotted tossing a gun from the footbridge. Christina attempted to speak, but Michael flashed her a look. Molly recognized Michael's expression as an attempt to keep Christina silent. Molly insisted Christina reveal all she knew. Christina, I am not an idiot, Molly explained. Molly was shocked to find that Christina had visited the baby's burial the night before. Molly felt confident Christina was hiding something, so she departed to speak with TJ. Molly arrived in TJ's workplace and raged over Christina. My mom is at the police station right now, and I think she's about to be arrested for something Christina did, Molly told me. Molly informed TJ what had transpired when the cops arrived at Alexa's home. She claimed she could tell Christina and Michael were hiding something. Michael? The same person that gives TED Talks when people aren't honest with him about truth and honesty? Is that Michael? TJ asked. 
Molly stated that she believed Christina was responsible for John's death based on circumstantial evidence. Christina returned to Alexis' house and questioned Michael why he had not permitted her to tell Molly the truth. Michael insisted that telling the truth would get Christina and Sonny in danger. Christina insisted on doing something to aid Alexis. Michael tried to reassure Christina that Alexis would be okay without her. Christina posed one question. She knew she hadn't killed John, and she was certain Alexis hadn't, but she knew Molly wouldn't believe her. How about you? Why do you believe me? Christina asked Michael. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.